Hey everybody, it's Gamer Gramps here. Today we are going to be explaining everything you could possibly want to know about Civilization VI Secret Societies, a new game mode that was just launched recently. So if that sounds like something that you might want to learn more about, then definitely stick around. If you want to get good at Civ VI, then subscribe and click the bell to keep up with this channel. Okay, so before we jump into things here, we're going to be talking about the Secret Societies and everything it's about, my personal thoughts and sort of a little bit of a review of the game mode, and then we'll be doing a quick summary of the four different societies and what they're all about. As always, with this kind of video, there will be timestamps that will be pinned at the top of the comment section in case you don't want to listen to me ramble. You can just jump to whatever you're interested in finding out about. And just a forewarning for anybody out here, this is not a guide on Secret Societies. I actually was originally just going to do a video for each Secret Society itself, specifically going over different and strategies and what everything entails but then one of my viewers had asked me to do like a summary video so again this isn't a guide it's just going to go over everything in details in case you don't happen to know about it and yeah with that being said let's just jump into things here so first things first we'll cover the bare essentials Secret Societies is a new game mode that is part of the New Frontier Season Pass. It launched with the Ethiopia DLC pack in late July and is very easy to turn on and off as you please. So just because you bought it and have it installed doesn't mean you have to play every game with it enabled. There are four different societies that you can join and each one has its own pros and cons. As you play through the game with this mode active, the other civilizations in the game will also be joining their own respective societies, which leads to its own unique set of problems and opportunities. Civilizations that you might normally have had an easy time befriending might actually have a negative impression of you if you're a member of a rival society. The other side of that coin is that obviously it will be easier to become friends with civilizations that are in the same order as you since they have a positive impact on your relationship. Each of the four societies has their own set of promotions and can help you down the path for whatever type of victory you're interested in. There's one that mainly focuses on improving science, another for culture and diplomatic victories, the third focuses mainly on faith and religion, and last but not least there's a society focused mainly on domination based bonuses. Once you have the necessary DLC installed, you simply turn it on and off with a click of a button when you're getting ready to start your game. So speaking of the necessary DLC being installed, let's quickly cover what exactly you need to buy in order to play with Secret Societies and realistically how much you're looking to pay for it. You can obviously buy anything you need from whatever platform your Civ franchise is on like Steam or Epic Games etc. However, I'm showing it here on Fanatical.com because quite simply, I'm an affiliate of their company and I get commissions when people purchase games from them using my reference code and everything we need to touch on is laid out nicely for us on their website. So other than the vanilla base game that obviously it should go without saying is a must have, you need to have the Gathering Storm expansion purchased. All the prices here are going to be shown in the Canadian currency, so you have to figure things out for yourself depending on what part of the world you're from. I'd suggest just using Google to figure it out in your local currency if you're not sure. So as of August 2020, if you don't already have Gathering Storm, you're looking at roughly $50 Canadian for it on Windows, or roughly half of that for Mac and Linux because there's a good sale on at the moment, at least on fanatical.com anyway. Anyway, as I already mentioned, the Civ 6 C Secret Societies is part of the new Frontier Season Pass, which if you want the entire thing, you'd basically be looking at another 50 bucks Canadian as of right now. But the good news is, if you don't want the entire year-long pass, you can specifically buy the Ethiopia DLC pack, which has the Secret Societies mode included, and for that, you're only looking at around 7 bucks Canadian. That price is definitely a lot easier to swallow if you're still unsure about the value that's going to be delivered over the course of the 12 months that New Frontier is going to cover, or if money is just a little tight at the moment for whatever reason. If you do decide to purchase any of this stuff and wanted to go the extra step to help support the channel, you can find links in the description below for Windows as well as both Mac and Linux. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's go over each different society and how to unlock them. The first one we're going to cover is the Hermetic Order, and their promotions and bonuses focus mainly around improving science and helping with that win condition. When you join that society, you'll be able to discover Leeline tiles around the map which have some really nice yields on them, and they also give adjacency bonuses to districts as well, so you should keep that in mind when planning districts around them. In order to unlock the society, you need to get out and explore the map, because every time you discover a natural wonder in the game, you have a chance to receive an invitation to join them. Keep in mind that this is just a chance to receive the invitation. You're not guaranteed an invite when you first discover a wonder. And the same goes for the other secret societies as well. Triggering the requirement to unlock them just gives you a chance to get the invite. You can actually go an entire game without being invited to the society you're hoping to join. For instance, I was trying to get footage to do one of those in-depth videos I was talking about on the Owls of Minerva, and I literally went through like 70-something turns before I was actually invited to them, and that was on online speed. Now, when you do receive the invite, it also comes with a governor title attached to it, so this can actually lead to some really interesting strategies, because you can get multiple governor promotions very early in the game, and you don't have to use them in whatever order you're interested in. You can promote regular governors with them as well. Once you've been invited to a society, though, you can accept that any time and you have 
the ability to do that throughout the entire game. Just keep in mind that it does take a governor title to do this, so if you use them for other governors, you'll have to wait until you have one to spare. Also, keep in mind that you can only be a member of one society per game, and once you've made your choice, you're stuck with it for better or worse. Next up on our list is the Owls of Minerva. This society's promotions focus on things that will definitely help speed you along on a cultural or diplomatic victory. In order to have your chance of being invited to join them, you have to send an envoy to a city-state. So it definitely comes in handy if you get out and about on the map early and get some first meet envoys from different city-states. Again though, it's not just the first envoy, it's every time you send one so you have plenty of chances throughout the course of your game. Just wanted to take a sec to let you know I'm now an official partner of Fanatical Games. They're a great company that you can buy 100% guaranteed official game keys from, which is great because you purchase a Steam key so you don't have to worry about using a different installer like Epic Games or EA's Origin. You can find links in the description down below for both the Windows and Mac versions of the games I usually cover on the channel, but if you're buying anything else just leave a comment below and I can give you a link for any game you're looking to buy. Believe it or not, they have deals on regularly that are even cheaper than purchasing directly from Steam itself. A perfect example of this is the New Frontier Pass for Civ 6. I literally bought it directly from Steam yesterday when it was launched, only to find out that it's on sale for 12% cheaper at Fanatical for the next six days. So before grabbing your next game, consider checking out fanatical.com to help yourself and help support me at the same time. Third up to bat are the Void Singers. This society is based mainly around faith and religion, but they do have a promotion that turns 20% of your faith income into science, culture, and gold, which you can unlock in the medieval era. All you have to do to get your chance of joining them is grab any of the goodie huts you come across while exploring the map. The last secret society is the Sanguine Pact. This is the one that comes in handy for domination-based games. This society unlocks the infamous vampires that everybody can't seem to stop talking about. It's as if you either love them or hate them, there doesn't seem to be much wiggle room from the comments that I've read. Anyway, to have your shot at joining them, all you have to do is clear out barbarian camps. Alright, so as far as my own personal take on the Secret Societies goes, I'm going to be completely honest with you, I was pleasantly surprised. Going into this, I I was interested a little bit. I thought though, to be completely honest, that it would be like, maybe I'd play it for a game, maybe two, maybe even three or four at the most, like maybe try every society out and then just kind of never touch it again. But then after having played around with it a bit, and again, I haven't even tried all, all of them yet, but I... Like I said, I was pleasantly surprised and it just, it adds a whole lot of complexity to the game because there's so many different strategies that you can use and like depending on what civilization you're using and even if a secret society is based on say for instance the Void Singers, the one that is predominantly based around faith and it's supposed to be to help you win like religious games and all that. I'm actually doing right now a religious based domination game where I'm using the Void Singers instead of like the the sanguine pact that is the vampires and it's supposed to be for domination normally and it's just it's really interesting it just changes things up a bit and like i said depending on what civilization you use even the same secret society can be played different ways depending on what civilization you choose to play it with so personally i would highly recommend this but again like i'm not one to tell people how to spend their money so if you're gonna go ahead and buy it great if not then don't worry about it you can obviously <laughs> just live vicariously through me or somebody else on youtube and watch them play it if you want but anyway speaking of that religious domination game i'll throw a link to it in the top right hand corner you can check it out for yourself if you want other than that though we're gonna wrap things up here so if you haven't already please do me a favor and leave a like on the video it really does go a long way towards helping a small channel like me grow and clearly i need all the help i can get but uh anyways i've rambled enough at least for this video so i'm just gonna shut up and hopefully i'll see you in the next one